you have before you in your bucket, uh, amongst other things, there's lots of little baggies that have different parts in them and they should all be labeled. Um, and you also have a little circuit board that looks like this. There should also be a USB cable. And uh, then you should see a bunch of little things that look like this. Some of the, I think most of the kits have double wide ones. This is just single wide. Um, and then there should also be just, just crap tons of these little jumper wires, um, you know, wires like that, that uh, uh, we'll be using. Um, so how many of you guys have ever used one of these things before? This, the, uh, it's called a breadboard. Yeah, one, anybody else? No? All right, so what a breadboard is, um, is basically a simple way of doing circuit prototyping. Um, and you would prototype it on breadboards, and then eventually, if you were trying to produce something, eventually you do a design to put it on a printed circuit board, or PCB for short, that would look something more like this, okay? Um, so these things are great for quick prototyping because you can plug things in and unplug them very quickly and make changes uh, to your circuit as you uh, as you go. Um, now, the way that these things are configured, sorry, let me grab one thing. Uh, you'll notice that there's lots of rows of holes on it. And some of the holes are internally connected to each other, and some of them aren't. So here's sort of the, the pattern. On the outside edges, so the long edges, you have, um, on mine, it's got a little red stripe, and it's labeled plus. That entire row of holes is internally connected. So if I can connect two things to uh, a plus rail, they will be touching on the inside, and hence the circuit would, would be complete. Same thing for the row uh, that's in my case labeled minus. Um, and then also down here at the bottom, there's a second one that's labeled plus and minus. Um, those are also internally connected. Uh, but the plus row is only internally connected to itself. It's not connected to the minus row. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, now, the, the labels here of plus and minus don't necessarily mean anything. Um, however, as we will see when we wire these up, we'll use those as kind of a reference uh, for power and ground. So we'll use plus for power, minus for ground, and then we'll do some other things with the other ones. Um, okay, then on the middle section, the, the wires, or sorry, the internals are connected in columns. So these five holes inside are connected. The next column of five holes is connected to itself, all right, but these five and those five are not internally connected. Okay, so does that make sense? All right, same thing on the other side of this bridge. So this gap down the middle, there's no connections that go across it. Um, and the size of that gap is um, very carefully chosen because you see, for example, this chip here, it will perfectly bridge that gap and the pins will line up perfectly with the holes. So if you're doing prototyping and you're also using chips, then they'll fit perfectly on your breadboards. Uh, okay, but we, we won't be using any chips for, for our work. Um, okay, so let's wire up basically the simplest possible circuit we can need. Um, and for that, the components we're gonna use are, I need a light. So I need a light emitting diode. That's one of these things, okay? Um, I'm also gonna need a resistor. Um, and uh, the resistors, okay, looks like this. Now, how do I know which size resistor to get? Because look at your bags and look at all the different resistors. They're labeled on the bags, but if they weren't labeled, what would you do? Yeah, you'd look at the color bands. So it's a little hard to see on them. You have to really kind of squint, okay? But also inside each of your buckets is one of these cards um, that looks like this, okay? Or 
put it right side up. Okay, there are different schemes for the color bands, but this is basically how you read them off. Okay, so uh, the other thing you could do, um, particularly if, like, uh, this color banding system might be really annoying if you're colorblind. Um, so the other way you can do it is, of course, all the buckets have a multimeter in them, so you could test the resistance that way. Um, but, uh, right. So looking at the baggies, we've got resistance values, 220, 330, 1K, uh, 1K I think 4.7K, um, and then 10K, yeah, is what I put in here. For the lights, we just need a pretty mild resistor, so we use a 330, that's sufficient, okay? So grab one of the 330s out, um, and uh, the other thing that, um, I mean, those of you who have seen my office know that, that I'm really bad about this, so do as I say, not as I do. Um, when you take apart, off of the thing and you're not using it anymore, where are you going to put it? Back in the correct bag, because otherwise you end up with something like this, and I start taking points off. Okay, so yeah, don't do that. Um, okay, so you've all got a 330 ohm resistor, a light, and a bunch of wires. Okay, the colors of the wires don't really matter, but uh, if you are kind of smart with it, then you can use them to, um, to, to kind of save your bacon a little bit. Okay, now, LEDs are called light emitting diode, or the, it stands for light emitting diode, right? So a diode is a part that only allows electricity to flow one direction, not the other. Okay, as such, the LED has to be plugged in a certain way. If you plug it in backwards, it won't work. So how do I know which way is which? Grab an LED and look at it. And tell me what you notice. Doesn't matter what color it is. Okay, so you guys see that there's a long leg and there's a short leg. Okay, the long leg indicates the positive side and the short leg therefore indicates the ground side. Okay, so if I plug these in backwards, they won't work. And the other mild annoyance though, is in order to see which side is long and which side is short, it has to be not in the breadboard. Because when you plug it into the breadboard, you're not gonna be able to see the long versus the short. Okay, so I'll plug it in there, for example. Okay, and let me tilt it. So notice that it's going, uh, the two pins are aligned with the long direction right? What would happen if I plugged them in uh, so that I had, say, one pin there and one pin there? Short circuit. You know, okay, it's not going to work, okay? All right, so I've got them plugged in, and it doesn't matter exactly which column you do it on here, but I just plugged one in there, so I've got my long pin on the left and my short pin on the right. Again, doesn't really matter. Just pick something and be consistent, and then you'll be good. Okay, now, I need a resistor, okay? And the resistor, you can see the little wires on either end. These things are pretty malleable and bendy, okay? So I tend to bend them kind of like that, roughly speaking. And then I'm gonna put one of them on the short leg and one of them over on the other side of the bridge. And it sometimes takes a little bit of finagling to get them in, and you guys will get used to it. Just, you know, don't shove too hard because uh, the metal uh, legs are, because they're so soft, it'll, like, bunch up and, and crunch. Okay, so you're going to kind of be a little gentle, but not too gentle and not too manhandly. Okay, is that good? Okay, now we need to connect here my resistor so I'm going to put a wire there um, and I'm going to put it to the ground rail okay like so okay and then finally I'm going to connect a wire to the positive rail 
and the long leg of the LED. Okay, and I'll kind of rotate this so that you guys can see it from a few different angles. Okay, good. Okay, so if I've got all of that set, then what's the last thing I need to do? I, I actually need to plug it into some power, okay? And that's where the little Arduino comes in. Okay, so this little board here, okay, and some of y'all's are red, but it doesn't matter. Um, just two different manufacturers of them. Uh, these boards, okay, allow give us a convenient power source and later on, they will also allow us to program and turn lights on and off sort of in an automated way. Okay, so that's why we're using them. We could just use a battery, right? That would work. Um, but think of these as a fancy battery. They've got a USB cable on the end, so it needs to be plugged into a USB port either on, what was that? Oh, <laughs> it's like a dying cat or something, right? Um, can you do that again? That was kind of funny. Okay. Um, it's like having a singing frog, like good luck getting it to repeat. Hello, my honey. Hello, my darling. You guys all know that cartoon, right? Okay. Um, and actually speaking of cartoons, just quick pop quiz. Um, did you guys watch the Smurfs when you were kids? Okay. So like if so somebody made a Smurfs reference in class, you would all understand it. Okay, well, like, the existence of the Smurfs and how they look, right? You guys would instantly get that. Okay, just checking. Um, we, we were having dinner and talking about it, and we're like, she's like, do you think they're going to know what the Smurfs look like? And I'm like, oh, I certainly hope so. Um, but, yeah, we were kind of like old people for a moment. Like, what about Fraggle Rock? Okay, or He-Man. Yeah, okay, that one got turned into memes, though, so, um, yeah. Things from the 80s. Or the G.I. Joe cartoons? No? Yeah. All right. So, back to our circuit. We need to power this thing. So, plug it into a USB port on something, okay? You can either use, if you've got your computer open, uh, or use the room computer. You may have to turn the room computer on. Um, and how many of you guys have Macs that only, of course, have USB-C ports on them? Okay, I'll buy a pile of adapters and put an adapter in every box, so you got one. Huh? Yeah. I just need to get 16 of them or whatever. I have a pile in my office, but they tend to disappear. So, <clears throat> Okay, so if it's plugged in and powered on, it'll have a light on it. Uh, the color may vary, just depends. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got this great circuit, and now I need to power what we've done. Okay, so if you'll notice, there's all, along the far left and right of your board, there's a bunch of different holes that your wire pin can go into, okay? And we want to power using plus five volts, okay? So you'll notice that <clears throat> along one edge, there's one that's labeled plus five V, okay? So find that one and connect it to the positive rail. Okay? And look on the sides of the little things that have holes because they're labeled, right? So you can't screw this up. Well, you could, but don't. Okay? So I've got plus 5 volts connected. Yeah. And then now what do I need? Almost. One more wire. Yeah, I need to complete the circuit by connecting this 
to the ground pin. Okay, so there's several ground pins. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, and I'll connect it there, and then my light should light up. Yay. Okay. Okay, so minus goes to ground, plus goes to plus 5 volts. Oui ou non? Non? Vous avez un problème? Qu'est-ce que c'est le problème? French. And this one goes to the because this should be right there. Oh, and then plug, that and then plug that on the ground. Yes. It should say no. no. G and D. This one. Yep. But there's two of them, and it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay. There you go. Okay, you guys already failed. Well, yeah. So we had a problem with metal piece for in Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. This one is a 330, I know, because it was connected to an LED. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll have to take this bucket and sort it out. Okay. The other thing you did is this is short circuited. Well, who's also live streaming to the entirety of the internet right now, so. Does that mean the famous? I guess someone's stupid enough to become famous. We're going to be in some like teacher days of the dumb students. Don't tempt me. <laughs> well, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm learning how to speak your language. Yeah. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay. All right, so do we all have a light lit up? No? You fail. All right, let's see what the problem is. The other is 5 volts, and then this one goes into ground. And then let's see what the problem is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so sometimes the wires are a little, they don't make very good contact. And so you just kind of have to finagle them a little bit. Um, so there we go. Yeah, okay. All right, so we got a light. Yeah? Light? Light? We all good? Okay. So, <clears throat> electrically, all we have done is make a single circuit that has a light. How exciting. Okay? It's about to get a lot more complicated. Okay, so... What we want to do is we're going to leave that the way it is, but we're going to add something to it, okay? Um, and so we're going to add more stuff kind of over here uh, to uh, illustrate the, tr well, get a transistor into this and illustrate transistor function, and then we'll make it even more complicated and more complicated, and yeah, over the next week and a half. Um, okay, now... Some of the stuff that you have to do, what, what happens when it doesn't work right? Okay, so how do I troubleshoot these things? What are the common errors that you're going to make with circuits? Uh, well, these parts. Yeah. Yeah, okay, plugging stuff in on the wrong row, having your LED backwards. Okay, what else? Yeah, the thing's not making good connection. That's especially true with the resistors because they're so soft. Sometimes you just have to unplug it and kind of jiggle it a little bit and plug it back in and then it'll work. 
Um, you know, these breadboards, right, you buy them, like, by boxes full of them, right? So it's not exactly, they're not the most fancy things in the world. There is a little bit of sort of slop to the measurements and stuff. Um, okay. However, the, the one error that you never, ever, ever want to do is connect plus 5 volts directly to ground, even if there's some things in between. Doing so is a short circuit, and it will fry things. Okay, so don't do that. Yes. Well, or, like, let's, oh, okay, good question. So if none of this was here, this would not be a short circuit, because even though I've got plus 5 volts at the top of the thing and, and 0 volts at the bottom of the thing, there's no connection between here and here. If I connected a wire from there all the way down to there, that would short circuit it, okay? The other thing that would short circuit it is if I had this circuit, everything like I've got there, but I pulled this resistor, and so I was going plus 5 volts to the LED from the LED down to ground, that would burn out the LED because I'd be trying to put too much energy through it, okay? And the LED would, would actually spark a bit and might give off a little bit of a, a puff of the magic purple smoke, okay? Um, they, they spend inordinate amount of effort in the factory to get the magic purple smoke into the LED, and once you let it out, um, yeah. Okay, so don't do that because it will fry at minimum some of the components. It might fry the circuit board, and if you really screw up royally, it might manage to even fry your computer. Okay, probably won't because USB does have some overload protections and stuff built in, but don't do it. Okay, um, Okay. so just leave that circuit there. And uh, for most of the circuits uh, that we'll build, I find it convenient to have basically this on the far left because it shows us that it's actually powered on, right? It's just a power light, no big deal. Um, okay, so let's go back to the transistor. Okay, so for the transistor, there are several different kinds, and we'll talk about them uh, in turn. But the one I want you to get out is look for a baggie that's labeled BJTN. Okay, not hmm? BJT, not FET. This one. Okay, so there are four bags of transistors in there, and they're labeled BJTN, BJTP, FETN, and FETP. We'll talk about the FETs later. Today we're going to talk about the BJTs. Okay, so BJT stands for, anybody remember from Friday? Transistor, yeah. So BJT is bipolar junction transistor. These things work using one magic principle of physics, and then the FETs that we'll talk about use a different magic principle from physics, which for our purposes is magic, okay? Um, who is it that said that any technology sufficiently advanced would be indistinguishable from magic? Was it like Asimov or somebody? No? Huh? Okay, anyway. Um, so, yeah, these things use basically, uh, you know, properties of physics that we could spend an entire semester talking about, um, and I don't know enough of it myself. So for our purposes, just think of it as magic, okay? Now, the BJTs are, um, in some sense, like we said last time, amplifiers, okay? We apply a small amount of current to them in order to amplify that current uh, Okay, so that's one use of them. Our use of them from, from a, a computer construction standpoint is as a controllable switch. Okay, so it's an electrically controllable switch that has no moving parts. If I apply current to part of the transistor, it turns on the rest of it, meaning it's allowing current to flow through it, and that means that, um, well, means that another, I can turn on one circuit by using another. Okay. And if I put these things together in the right way, uh, then I can, well, build a computer. 
Okay, just a few thousand of them. Okay, so pull out one of the BJTs, okay, and take a look at it. All right, let me kind of scoot that out of the way. There's a couple things that you're going to notice about it. The first is, and I'll just sort of set it down there. There are how many pins on it? Three. Okay. The middle one is always the base. Okay, that's easy. But then the other two, one of them is the collector and the other one's the emitter. But how do I know which way is which? Okay. Now, look at the, the package itself. You'll notice that there's a round side and a flat side. Yes? Okay. Face the flat side towards you. And if the flat side is towards you, on this particular type, the base is on the, uh, sorry, the base is in the middle, collector is on the left, emitter is on the right. Okay. If we get those backwards, things aren't going to work correctly. Okay. So, um, Right. Okay, good. Okay, so um, let's just plug our transistor in someplace. Doesn't really matter where. Okay, and I've got the flat piece, the flat side of it, facing towards me. Okay, now the other thing, let me actually unplug it, is if you look at it very, very, very carefully, and you might have to kind of tilt it just barely in the light, can you read that there's some stuff written on the flat side? Okay, what does it say on the flat side? 22N, 2222A. Okay, yes? Okay, if yours says something other than that, it's not a BJTN. Okay, so if you get them mixed up, this is how you unmix them up. Uh, okay, so, and we'll talk about the, what, what the labels are for the other ones, but um, the NPN, um, okay, so, okay, so 2N2222As, that's basically the model number of these things, okay, all right, good. So, um, I need to connect several other things to my circuit. So, the first thing I want is, well, let's put my transistor on. Okay? Good? Um, and then, let me connect uh, plus 5 volts to the collector of the transmitter, uh, transistor, that's the left-hand pin. Okay. And then I'm going to put an LED and a resistor here. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to connect the, um, let me use a different color. I'm going to connect the, uh, let's see, let me move this. Okay, so what parts do I need here to do this? And I'll draw a schematic what I just did. Okay, what extra part did I just use that I didn't say that I was going to use? Yeah, I need another 330. Okay, so here's basically schematic what I've drawn, done. Okay, so I've got plus 5 volts. I've got um, Okay, so I've got that. So look at the, the diagram here. 
okay, and compare what, what we've done. So what's the, basically the only difference between this and the light circuit that we already built a minute ago? As I've got the transistor in between. Okay, otherwise it looks exactly like the light circuit. I've just added one part. Okay, now nothing's doing anything yet, is it? Okay, why not? There's two ways to say this. Okay, how many pins are there on our transistor? Yeah, we need to power the base. Okay, however, how much power do we need to apply to the base? Not much. Very, very, very little. Okay, so what's that code for? Should I plug the base directly into plus 5 volts? No, bad. Okay, what should I put in between there for? A resistor, and I want a pretty high resistance, okay, in order to very, very much limit the amount of current that's going to go through this. Okay, so what's the, what are the higher resistances that we've got? We got 1K, 4.7K, and 10K. Let's use a 10K. All right, so, and of course, whoever used this before me didn't clean up their mess. So, 1K to 20. I see somebody's color chart for a moment. <laughs> what do you mean? I think this is a 10K. We'll know in a minute. Um, okay, so you guys all got one 10K out? Okay, good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my 10K to the base. Okay, and I'll just kind of jump over the bridge there just to keep things sort of tidy. Okay, and then still nothing happens because what do I need to do? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that over to, and let me get a longer wire so you guys can actually see it. Okay, so if I connect this to plus 5 volts, my LED will turn on, okay? All right, now, let me update the schematic with what we've added. Okay, so, do we have that? Yes? No? All right. Let me look. Screwed it up already. Yeah, Killing me. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the problem. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. You were just one column off. Okay, we've all got the second LED. It should be solid on. No, anybody? No. No. Okay. So it should be, these should be here. Right. Yeah, and then, well, you've got basically your board upside. Oh, no, wait a minute. Did you guys do, you did plus five volts to that side. Okay, so that means that this needs to go here. We could just switch the two. 
well, yeah, but then you have to switch everything else, right? Because otherwise it's all backwards. Um, okay, so the that's five volts. Okay, so these are going to have to. Okay, so I'm going to flip this one around because the. Um, Here, resistor there, and then the base is power, which should be to two plus five volts. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you just had it. Well, it, it, you can sometimes use the resistor as to double as both the wire and the resistor if you get the prongs in. The, like if you think about it, then you can, you know. Yeah. Um, good, good, good. So I'm going to flip it around. Just so it's facing me. Okay. Ah, this is just one column off. And then so is this one. So let me just scoot this one over just so it's easier to see. Okay, so this is coming from the, the emitter to the LED. Then the resistor is going to go from the LED. Oh, it doesn't have to be in the same pocket? Nope. It can be just in the same line with it, though? Yeah. Okay, to ground. And then this is our base that should go there. Weak, okay. weak light. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it better. is. Um, no, it's fine. It just... Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Okay, we're good back there. All right. So everything's good. Yes. No. Uh, you were good. Then you screwed it up. What'd you do? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the problem that they just had is one that's relatively common, okay, particularly with the resistors. Sometimes, like I said, you need to jiggle them a little bit because they don't quite make good contact. Or pull them out, kind of try and straighten out the wires a little bit and try putting them back in. It, yeah, there, sometimes does take a little bit of finagling. Okay, so right now we have, because we are permanently powering our base of the transistor, the light is always on. So this isn't particularly exciting yet, okay? But I'm gonna make one very minor change, okay? So the wire that I've got going to my base, I'm gonna pull it from plus five volts, and of course the light therefore turns off, right? And then you'll notice over on the other side of this thing, there are a bunch of numbered holes, okay? And I'm gonna plug it into one of them, I'm going to plug it into pin number two, which is the third one because there is a pin zero. Okay, so plug it either to either pin two or pin four; it doesn't matter. Um, and you're going to notice something. Okay, what happens? It's flashing in some sort of pattern. Okay, why is it doing that? <clears throat> Magic. Okay. It's doing that because the Arduino board has been told to do so, okay? So these pins, the, the ones that are numbered on the Arduino, can be programmed to turn on and off in various patterns, okay? And what we're going to end up doing, as we'll see later, is program them so that uh, we'll have two pins, and for uh, in all my examples, I've used two and four, that there's nothing special about two and four. You just can't use zero and one because those have specialized purposes. Um, to turn on and off in uh, basically the, the, the obvious pattern, okay? So let's look at how we would program this, okay? Now, some of your boards, uh, for example, the one the guys back there, how is yours flashing? Okay, but pay, pay closer attention to it. It is Morse code. 
You don't? You ought to know this in Morse code. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's this flashing SOS in Morse code. Okay, why is theirs flashing SOS and everybody else's is just doing something else? Okay, so the neat thing about these Arduino boards is when you program them, they store the program in memory, and when you power the board up, it starts running that program again. So you don't have to reprogram it every time you turn it on. That's kind of handy, right? So those are uh, yours is flashing SOS because whoever last used that board, that's what they had programmed, and it's still on the board. Okay. So now let's talk about how to actually program these things. Um, okay. And for this, let me switch over to my Raspberry Pi. Okay. So. <clears throat> If you want to install this software on your own computer, okay, you're going to go to Arduino.cc, and then there's uh, under software, there's the download thing, okay? And uh, great, you can install that. When you first load it, you're going to see something like this, okay? Now, the other thing I'm going to do, because I'm lazy, is if I go into the transistor notes on um, on Canvas, then if I click on this link, it will actually. Um, download the program file, and I don't have to type any of it out. It's kind of handy. Okay, so it'll take a second to load. Okay, so let me uh, blow up the font here. Actually, let me just, yeah, let me just blow up the font so you guys can read it. Okay, so that's the, the basic program that we my Arduino is running. Um, so what do I need to do to set up an Arduino program? Well, the first thing I need to do is tell it basically which pin or pins are inputs or outputs. Okay, so in our case, we're only going to use one of the pins for right now, pin two, uh, and I want to configure it as an output. So in the setup mode, setup part, I've got pin mode, two is the number, and I want it configured as output. All of that is case sensitive, right? So the upper and lower case matters, and if you don't have the semicolon or the curly braces or whatever, it won't work. Okay, so it's got to be typed exactly as shown. Um, okay, now then I have this loop part, and what I'm going to do is basically turn pin two on, which is by setting it to a high voltage level, that means uh, plus five volts, uh, wait for a second, and then turn it off and wait for another second. And this will just run this in a loop over and over and over again. Okay, great. So most of your boards are already running basically this, okay, with the, uh, the SOS being the exception. But really, what is SOS? Yeah, it's kind of a longer version of this, because SOS is three quick ones, then three long ones, and then three quick ones, and then a pause, and then the whole thing repeats, right? So it's not rocket science to turn this into SOS. Yeah? Okay. So how do I upload this to my board once I've written it? Okay, so I've got the board plugged into a USB port on this thing. Okay, and then what I need to do is, under tools, I need to select the board and make sure that it says Arduino Uno. That's the particular model of the board that we're all using. You'll notice that there's a whole bunch of other ones, um, and, but the ones we're using are, are, are um, Unos. Okay, then on port, 
this is going to look differently on y'all's computers. Um, it, it'll look differently on, so I'm on a Raspberry Pi, which is running Linux. It's going to look slightly different for on Windows and on uh, a Mac. Okay, but basically you want to look on the port thing, and one of them should have Arduino Uno in parentheses. On Windows, it'll be like COM3, COM4, something like that. And on a Mac, it probably will also be flash dev slash something. Okay. Um, okay. And so I'm just going to make sure that it's selected the correct board. Okay. And then once I've got that, you can also hit get board info and it'll automatically do all that. But, um, okay. So I've got tools and I've got both things selected. And then all I need to do is hit this little arrow. And what that will do is compile the sketch, which basically means take this uh, text and turn it into actual machine code that the machine will execute, uh, and then upload it to the board. When it's uploading to the board, you may notice some blinking lights going on or whatever, but that's all it's gonna do, okay? So it uploaded it to the board. Don't hit the check mark, hit the arrow. Okay, the, the check mark won't upload it to the board. It'll just double check that there's no errors. Okay, so uh, looking at my thing, how do I know that I've actually uploaded successfully? Well, let me cut the um, let me cut the delays by a factor of ten because that should be very obvious. Yeah. Okay, so do that, and then if I go over to that. It's flashing uh, on a, um, a five hertz pattern, right? Five per second. Yeah? Okay. So that's how I upload uh, to the board. And what we'll do uh, next time, basically, is we're going to add a second transistor into the mix, okay, which I sort of sketched out schematically how we would do this at the end on Friday. We'll add a second transistor. But that means we've got a second base that we want to control. All right, who should control the second base? If pin two is controlling one of the bases, let's control the other base with a different pin. Okay, and then our program is going to get a little bit more complicated because if I've got two different pins, how many combinations of them being both on and off are there? There's now four combinations right? Because they could both be off. One could be on, the other could be off, and there's two ways to do that, and then they could both be on. So I've got four combinations, and we'll want to program pins two and either three or four, doesn't matter. Um, we'll just do pin four. Um, you guys have probably noticed that skipping every other pin is kind of useful because it just fits better. Um, so we'll, we'll just all use pin four. Um, We'll configure them that way, and then we can see what output we get based on the different input patterns, and that'll make things kind of interesting to see. Okay. All right. So does it make sense? Okay. So uh, do one quick thing, which is uh, who's your bucket buddy? Write that down and exchange Snapchats or whatever it is you guys do these days to communicate. And also, on the bucket, you will see that there's a number or a letter, okay? Write down which bucket number you have, and don't screw that up. Okay, so you guys are bucket E. Huh? Okay, now, do not take the stuff out of the breadboard. Just unplug the, uh, the USB and then put everything back inside, okay? Because we'll continue with this on Wednesday, and later, uh, like later this week and early next week, you guys will also be doing some of this outside of class. So this is where it's critical you know what bucket number you've got, because how are you going to get these buckets outside of class? You're going to go to the library and get them from the checkout desk. Okay? All right, so you've exchanged contact info. You've written down your bucket buddy number. Yes? All right. Have a good rest of your day.